Hey, this is Mr. Leach with Simpson Math. Today I'm going to be showing you a virtual manipulative about conic sections. You can find this virtual manipulative at illuminations.nctm.org. When you go to that site, click on Interactives and then All Interactives. Scroll down and you'll see Conic Section Explorer. I would like for you to click the link in the description or go to this website so that way in a minute you can pause the video and play around with the virtual manipulative on your own. On the top left we have our cone view. We have a cone on the bottom. It actually extends and kind of inverts on the top. So it's this set of two cones. You can click and drag this cone around so that way you can see different views of this cone and actually have a better 3D understanding of how it's supposed to look. If you ever move it in a way that you don't really understand or can't really see what's going on, you can always just click on Reset. On the top right, we have the graph view. I would zoom out to probably about 4 or 8, just so we can get a good view. If it's zoomed in too much, it's kind of hard to see. Down here on the bottom left, we have our cone parameters. All this height is, it's just the height of the cone. Sometimes you might want to increase that so you can get a better view. From your studies in pre-calculus or analytical geometry, you know that these conic sections are formed when a plane intersects with this cone. So the taller you make this cone, the more you'll see the conic section actually represented as an intersection. I would probably put it to about 1.5 and then you can probably leave it. The other three will be affecting the conic section. The slant is the slant of the cone. The higher you make it, the steeper the cone is. The lower you make it, the less steep the cone is. The, for the plane parameters, this is just like the equation of a line, y equals mx plus b, because you're only affecting the slope in a single direction. Just like with the slope of a line, the further away the number is from zero, the steeper the line is, and the closer it is to zero, the less steep it is. This B is like a y-intercept for the plane. You can move it up and down. It won't affect the slope. It just moves it up and down. If you ever get to a point that you get stuck and you move things, you need to reset it. Just hit Reset Parameters, and it will reset everything, and you'll need to reset your cone and graph view as well, but that'll help you reset everything. So what I want you to do is to go to this website. The link is in the description below. Play around with the virtual manipulative and find the four conic sections. As you know from your studies in pre-calculus, there are four conic sections. There's the circle, the ellipse, the parabola, and the hyperbola. I want you to see when you get a parabola, what is special about the relationship between the cone and the plane. When you get a hyperbola, a circle, and an ellipse, again, see the relationship between the cone and the plane, both visually and also look at the numbers. You might want to find a few different times when you see a hyperbola, or a few different times when you see a parabola, or a circle, or an ellipse. Change it up. Put in the top half of the cone or the bottom half of the cone. Change it up some more. Maybe make the slope negative or change the slant. Make it really, really shallow or really, really steep. Change it up so that way you understand when you get a parabola and when you get a circle, an ellipse, and a hyperbola. Spend some time playing with it. You can pause the video for about 5 to 10 seconds, and I'll come back and show you what I found. So go ahead, pause the video, find the circle, ellipse, parabola, and hyperbola. Welcome back. Let's start with the circle. So I can start making this plane less and less steep. We do notice we hit the ellipse, but notice it's not quite a circle until we hit a slope of zero. So that's the circle. The circle exists for only just a moment because the moment the slope is negative, it's an ellipse. The moment the slope goes positive, it's an ellipse. So the circle has to be perpendicular to this midline. 
So let's find an ellipse. Well, like I said, that's pretty easy. So this is an ellipse. If I make it be negative as well, that's an ellipse as well. So when is it not an ellipse? Well, let's keep this growing. Is this a parabola? Well, adjust your graph a little bit. Nope, it definitely is still an ellipse. When is this not an ellipse? Let me click this up one more time. And it looks like I have my parabola now. So maybe in order for me to figure out when we have an ellipse, I might need to figure out when we have a parabola. So let me put this at point 9, and let's see what happens with the slant. So if I make the slant bigger, well, this is still an ellipse, and it's actually getting smaller and smaller, so I think I'm going in the wrong direction. So let's make this slant smaller. Okay, I'm at point 9. Let's see. Do I still have my ellipse? No, this definitely looks like it's not going to be closing back up. And the slope to our plane is the same slope as the slant of the cone. Let's move the slant of the cone down to 0.5 and let's see what happens. In order for this to be a parabola, let's see if I need to move this to 0.5 as well. And that's true. This is a parabola. If we make it be a little bit less steep, then it becomes a ellipse again. 0.5, it's a parabola. Smaller, it's an ellipse. So it seems to me that I have a parabola when the slope of the plane and the slant of the cone are the same. Let's see if it's true for it being steeper. One more time. So if I have a slant of 2 and a slope of 2, do I have a parabola? Sure looks like it. Doesn't look like it's coming back down. So let's make this just, just slightly less steep. And is this an ellipse? Yes, it is. It'll eventually close back up. We can't see it with our picture, but if I was to make this taller and taller, we would eventually see that this would close back up. Because the reason for this is because this plane is cutting through this cone, but it's just shallow enough that it's eventually going to cut back onto the other side and come back out. With a parabola, when it's the same slope, it's actually never going to leave the cone and just going to keep heading out in the same direction, parallel to the edge of the cone, so it's never going to come out and close up and form that ellipse. So that's why it's always going to be a parabola, always, always, always getting wider. So when do we see our fourth conic section, the hyperbola? If you were watching the graph earlier, you saw it. When this got steeper, we saw the the other half of the hyperbola coming in here. Can't quite see it in the picture yet, but if I make this steep enough, we'll see that this plane gets so steep that it actually starts crossing into the other part of the cone, so that's what forms the hyperbola. So just to be clear, when does the parabola end and the hyperbola begins? Well, let's go back to the parabola to find out. So if I'm right, the parabola exists when the slope of the cone and the plane are the same, so if this is just barely steeper, that means I should have an hyperbola. Let's zoom out and find out. Yep, there it is. If they're the same slope, it's not there. If it's just barely steeper, and now it becomes a, a hyperbola. If I was to increase the height big enough on this, I would eventually see that this plane will eventually touch and cross through with the bottom part of that cone. As a challenge, I want you to play around with the virtual manipulative and see if you can get the conic section to equal a line, a point, or an X. Pause the video and play around with the virtual manipulative. When you move the B down to zero, you actually get a line, because it's crossing through the very, 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 very edge of both of those cones. If you increase that slope, we actually get an X, because it's crossing directly through that middle. And if you decrease that, we just get a, a single point because it's only passing the cones at that one single point. I hope this helps you understand conic sections a little bit better. So that way when you're graphing them and solving them and working with them, you better understand the four different conic sections.